Welcome to our webinar entitled, It's Not God's Fault. Did you hear that? It's not God's fault. And we are going to talk about that. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just give you the glory, honor, and praise. And Lord, you just take over and do what you need to do through this webinar to touch people's hearts and awaken them to uh, things that you want to reveal to them. We just send forth the Holy Spirit now to prepare their hearts, minds, and spirits and to receive your word and the angels to go forth and minister to them as well. And we just give you the glory, honor, and praise. And we also invite we invite you, Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and all the angels and all of heaven. And we just give you the glory, honor, and praise. We put the blood of Jesus over this webinar, destroy every plan of the devil. Yes, that's the title. It's not God's fault, but you hear that a lot, and it's a shame because it's not his fault, and you'll see what I'm talking about. We have talked about making choices and the consequences, good or bad, as a result of it. The Father has given man, man the freedom of choice. Let's look in Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 to 20, in the Easy Read Version. Today I'm giving you a choice. Now listen very closely. This is in Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 to 20, in the Easy Read Version. Today I'm giving you a choice of two ways, and I ask heaven and earth to be witnesses of your choice. You can choose life or death. The first choice will be a blessing. The sec other choice will be a curse. So choose life. Then you and your children will live. You must love the Lord your God and obey him. Never leave him because he is your life. And he will give you a long life in the land. He, the Lord, promised to give you your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so before I move on, remember we talked about the Lord gives you a choice. Well, he's saying right here in Deuteronomy 30, he gives you two choices, one of blessing or curse, and it's you that chooses it by, um, you know, choosing life or death. So let's read on and see what else is he has to say. So we see here the consequence of choosing life, loving and obeying God, which is a blessing, or choosing death, which is a curse. You often hear when things are go wrong, it's God's fault. Yeah, you ever, yeah I'm sure you've heard it. You probably even said it. Well, it's just God's fault. Well, you know what? How can it be God's fault? He gave you a choice, and if you choose death, life away from God, you choose a curse. Your life is cursed because you chose a life away from God. People that go their merry way without any thought of God for God open themselves up for whatever throws their way. When you get go to help them, they may say, well, why did God do this to me? They have a bitterness against God. They chose death and curses. Why aren't they saying, why did the devil do this to me? Because that's who's doing it. But no, they, may, they choose a life outside of God and without God, going their merry way, living their life the way they want to, and they have they ask this question, why did God, why did God do this to me? No, God didn't do anything. You chose that way. And so you never hear anybody say, why did the devil do this to me? People are so quick to blame God. You never hear them blame the devil. God had nothing to do with what happened to them. It's not his fault. You hear me? It is not God's fault. They went on their merry way in sin, and they can't deal with the consequences. The Father is there to help them when they repent of their sin, 
turn to him and stop believing the lie it's his fault. They need to point the finger at themselves and acknowledge they made the wrong choice. They can make the right choice by repenting and returning to God. Do you see how that mentality, it's God's fault, can stop you from repenting and turning to him? When you change your perspective of things and see that it was a choice you made, he is there to forgive you and help you. Now let's look at another Bible verse on this topic. Proverbs 1, verses 29 to 31, and also verse 33 in the Amplified. Verse 29, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, that is, obeying him with reverence and all field respect. They, verse 30, they would not accept my counsel, the Lord said, and they spurned all rebuke. Verse 31, therefore they shall eat of the fruit of their wicked way. You hear what he said? You chose what you chose, then you eat the fruit of it. You accept the consequences and be satiated with the penalty of their own devices. Verse 33, but whoever listens to, to my wisdom will live securely and in confident trust and will be at ease without fear or dread of evil. So in these verses, it once again clearly lays out the results of your choices. I also want to say that God is a God of love, and that's in 1 John 4, 8 in the Amplified. He does everything out of love. If you have chosen life and loving and obeying him, you as his child will not always understand his ways, and so you can read about that further in Isaiah 55, verse 9 in the Amplified. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. His ways are always based on his love for you and what is best for you. Some of his children can get a little angry because they want what they want in their timing. As his child, the Father has your life all planned out for you. As you move forward and grow in him, more understanding of his love for you and his ways will unfold. Trust is the key. And may I add also faith. You, give, you gave him your life, now let him walk out his perfect plan for your life. Don't have it on your timing and your ways, but on his love for you in his timing and his ways. So I think there's been a light bulb that's gone off in some, some, some of you, your mind, and you're thinking, uh-oh. Well, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of repentance and also at the same time returning back to the Lord or for the first time asking the Lord in your heart. So just repeat this prayer after me if you're ready to do that. Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I repent of my sins. I repent of these things and these mindsets that were exposed in this webinar today. I, I, I have said that, and I repent of it, and I don't want to say it again. So I surrender myself totally and completely to you, Jesus, and I give you my heart and my life. Lead and guide me in your ways so that I can live this life that you have planned for me. And I just thank you, Lord. And also, too, um, we're going to go ahead and, and close in prayer here. But as I close in prayer, I'm just going to say a prayer over you. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for those that have said this prayer. I put the blood of Jesus over them. And, Lord, I know that you are so ready and willing to Work with those that have 
wholeheartedly surrendered themselves to you and repented of their ways. I just thank you, Lord, for your love for them and for all of us, Father. And I just give you the glory, honor, and praise. Well, we're going to end today. And um, just remember, it's not God's fault in anything. And um, help people with that, too. You learned something today. Share that with others, okay? And help them. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this webinar. I just thank you, Lord, for your truth and how you touch people's lives. And I just give you the glory, honor, and praise. And much fruit will come forth through this webinar for your glory and for your kingdom. I put the blood of Jesus over this webinar. Destroy every plan of the devil. Well, we're going to see you at the next webinar. Have a good one. God bless.